son of a bitch. This is the fourth time that I've been to the range with the Bull Armory SAS-2. I'm sitting here thinking of all the times. Uh, first time I ever shot it was that initial video. It fed, it extracted perfectly. I did not clean this gun. I did not lubricate it before I brought it out there. Frankly, I wanted the gun to fail and it didn't fail one time through the 500 rounds that I put through it. Would I carry this gun? Right now, not for sure. But if it performs, if I keep bringing it out to the range and it continues to perform the way it did the first time, that first 500 rounds, I think I would work this into my carry rotation if only because I can shoot this thing quickly and I can shoot it accurately better than my Glocks. I hate to say it. The second time is when I figured out, hey, it won't feed 147 grain hollow points. So I kind of dug up some old Federal 9B PLE and old gold dots, a bunch of old personal defense ammo that I've had for like almost 20 years. And I figured if this 1911 can run this ammo, this disgusting, crusty, nasty ammo, then it could probably run sufficiently well. Modern, clean, brand new, out of the box, hollow point. So this was kind of not like a torture test, just a funny little variable to throw in because I would think that this would be less reliable. Maybe it's not that significant of a difference, but perhaps less reliable than what you would say uh, was new production ammo. That's not 20 years old and crusty and all disgusting and gross and stuff. Oh, see that different ammo. Oh, look at that. I didn't do that, it just did it itself. Huh, that was weird. Like delayed cycling. So that same ammo, whatever that, that junk is, um, Winchester. It's like just some junky Winchester hollow point. You can see it's, it's pretty rusty too. Um, but that is, that is a long bullet relatively, and it's having a hard time going up that feed ramp. It really bothers me when a gun that I might be carrying jams up with a certain type of ammo, but I, I'm having a hard time like random ass 20 year old Winchester hollow point uh, that looks a little long. It just looks like it's not getting enough runway to kind of pop up that feed ramp. Pretty decent group for random ass hollow point ammo. Hot shit at 10 yards. <laughs> This thing shoots, man. Pretty good from 35 feet, I'd say. Got a couple of flyers there, but we're also dealing with a bunch of different types of ammo. We're rolling 24. I'm rolling 60 here. So we've got the Bull Armory SAS UL2, Ultralight 2. If you guys remember in that initial review, I ran, I think, over 500 rounds through it, and it ran flawlessly and ran well. Shot really well. Huge fan of this gun. And I was like, you know what? I'd actually carry this thing. But then I didn't shoot any hollow points through it. So we came to my favorite range in the entire world, St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. And I brought a mishmash of, like, random discarded hollow points that I had over the years. You know, right? Like, you, you keep them in your carry guns for a few years. They get old, you dump them out. So I brought a bunch of those, and it actually choked on a couple of unidentified hollow points. What I've done, now I've cleaned it. And we're using new factory Federal HST 124 and 147 grain. I only got 120 rounds out today, but we're gonna run this and it'll be kind of like a good intro to see if this thing is reliable with new <laughs> identified factory hollow point ammo, personal defense ammo when it's clean. 
So we'll see. Big day today for the little Bull Armory SAS. All right, going hot. Uh-oh. Look at that, first round. Now that might be because it's coming off the top of the magazine. Um, not that that makes me feel much better about it, but it could be just because it came off the top of the magazine. You don't have a, uh, you know, usually that, that first round can be troublesome off of a stiff mag. Let's see. All right, so it ran all those. You had that top round, which I worry about a little bit with these mags because getting that last round in there can be really tough. I'm actually completely unsurprised that it had a little bit of trouble loading that first round. So uh, let's go ahead and run a few more magazines, see how it does. There you go. Same as last time. This is the 147 grain, and I'm thinking the 147 grain, I don't know, maybe it's just me, might be a little bit longer than the 124. So we've got a whole box of 124 that we're gonna run through it, but same thing, top round off the magazine, uh, got hung up just a little bit. There's just not a lot of room, there's not a lot of runway for this thing to kind of get going on the smaller pistol. So, you know, I think you have 15 rounds in the mag. It looks like that that top round, shearing that top round off might be a problem with the 147 grain. Okay, interesting. So, didn't have any issues at all with the 124 grain. Ran it perfectly out of full magazines. We only ran 50 rounds of the 124 grain, we ran 70 rounds of the 147 grain. Now, I think we only had two malfunctions with the 147 grain and they were both from the top of the magazine. So I think that that's an interesting point. The question is, did it just break in? Is it because the magazines have a hard time with spring tension and having that 147 grain round? I don't know. Um, I'm going to reach out to Bull Armory and I'm going to find out, kind of get their opinion. But I mean, with the 124 grain, which is what I carry, it worked perfectly. It won't feed 147 grain hollow points. That's when I sent it back to Bull. Bull sent it back to me. They said, we don't have a problem with it. We experienced no malfunction shooting Federal HST 147 grain, which is where I was having the problems. So I get it back. I shoot it. Problems again. Now to bring everybody up to speed on the trials and tribulations of the Bull Armory SAS-2 Ultralight. You guys remember initially, I did the review, ran perfectly, but I only shot ball ammo. I remember that I forgot to do hollow point, so I brought it to the range again with a bunch of random hollow point. It seemed like it wasn't working with some of the 147 grain. I got last time a couple of bulk boxes of the Federal HST 147 grain. Brought it back, and yet again, it, it'll it feed 115, it'll feed 124, 147 grain, we were having problems, like it was jamming up. So Bull Armory was like, hey man, send it back to our service center in Miami. And I sent it back to service center in Miami, and their engineers checked it out, and they're like, dude, there's nothing wrong with this gun. We even bought Federal 147 grain HST, which they sent some of to me for me to try out. So I've got their 147 grain. Yep, you can see, I mean, it's 147 grain HST, a little bit different than the bulk box, but this presumably is the same ammo, right? Two fully loaded mags. That's critical because whenever we were having the issues the last time with the first and second round of the magazine, so like the top rounds, that was it. It ran it perfectly. It ran 124, it ran 115 grain without issue. 147, the first or second round would cause an issue. Let's see what happens with this stuff. God. 
This gun is so light, like HST is so peppy out of here. But I mean, as you saw guys, that one ran perfectly. And it wasn't happening with every magazine the last time we did this. It was happening like every couple of magazines. And there we go. That was like the seventh or eighth round. I mean, it's f***ing weird. I don't get it. And this is the ammo they were using. I'm not holding it like a pussy. I'm not shooting it poorly because all of those are 10 ring on the border of the 10 ring and I'm shooting at seven yards. That's the thing, this gun shoots. There we go. I think that's the exact same thing that just happened. That was like the seventh or eighth round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, this is like the eighth round. By the way, I've probably spent like freaking a thousand dollars worth of my own money on ammo because I mean, this is this HST is not cheap. And even though Federal's a sponsor, I've been buying it out of my own pocket. So I hope you guys are happy. You in greats. I swear to God, if there's a negative comment, I'm going to be rude. Let's go. What do you know? Look at that. So that looks like, yep, that was the last round in the mag send it back to bull a second time they look at it they say okay you know what we're gonna do we're gonna replace your magazines and they replaced i think they replaced everything but the slide and maybe parts of the fire control group like the hammer so we're gonna see how it runs they sent me a hundred more rounds of federal 147 hst which is worth like at this point like 200 bucks a box we're gonna shoot 100 rounds 400 freaking dollars worth of ammo through this thing tonight to see if it's fixed once and for all about to shoot what's this in here this is probably forty dollars worth of ammo in one of these magazines just gonna pee it away just pee pee it away God dang, single shoot. I, I will reiterate that point. This gun does shoot. I mean, I guess I'm throwing them up a little to the left, but just one ragged hole. I'm not sure if it's important or not, but this Federal HST is so hot, especially out of this light gun, that we actually lost a grip screw, if you can believe that-ish. So we'll just have to pop this bad boy back in there. Not the end of the world by any measure, but strange and befuddling. Last magazine, make it count. Um, ran perfectly, felt different. It did feel different. I don't know what they did. I um, it's a lot smoother. It was already a pretty smooth gun, but I felt like there was less resistance. So um, I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened, and I don't know what they did to fix it, but it worked perfectly, and it actually shot really well, too. So it is what it is. Conclusion slash wrap-up lesson number one. Always test your carry gun with hollow points. They're different than ball rounds, as we saw from this video. So to recapitulate, the only issues I had with the Bull Armory SAS-2 Ultralight 
We're with 147 grain hollow points, which have a longer overall length generally than 115 and 124 grain, which is what I carry. But then when I sent the gun back, to be fair, the second time, when I had the gun sent back and they polished the barrel and the feed ramp, changed the slide stop, changed out the magazines, after that, we were Gucci. Now, does that mean I'm going to start carrying the Bull Armory SAS to ultralight tomorrow? No. This thing shoots like a house on fire. It's one of the best shooting concealed carry guns that I have. If anything, because of how light it is, you actually get a little bit more felt recoil. However, the sights are great. The trigger is fantastic. Like I said in my initial review of this gun, I think this is a great carry option, albeit a little bit expensive. But if you like the 1911, if you want a gun that you can shoot well, I still recommend that you try one of these guns out. Did I have problems with mine with 147 grain? Yeah, I did. I sent it back. They didn't find any problems. I sent it back a second time, and based on my issues that I had that I showed them with video, they said, okay, we'll fix it, and we've got 100 rounds down the pipe. Just 100 rounds down the pipe since with no issues. So I'm probably not going to start carrying it until this ammo madness is over with and I can get hollow point ammo cheaply, run a few hundred more rounds through it. Like if I run another three, four, five hundred rounds of hollow point through it, 147 grain, and I have no issues, at that point, I'll probably be content to carry it. I like this gun. I hope those of you who bought a Bull Armory SAS based on my first video, I hope you also like yours. I hope you ran personal protection ammo and I further hope that it ran perfectly for you. So whatever ammo you're carrying, guys, don't forget, go to the range, check it out with your gun, make sure it works. And it sounds like if for some reason yours isn't working the way it ought to, the people at Bull will probably take care of you. Thanks a ton for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. We do not accept money in exchange for positive reviews. I bought this gun from Bull. They didn't send it to me for free. They didn't pay me to do this video. We have sponsors and we have you guys. We rely most heavily on viewer support from Patreon and Subscribestar. Guys, we give away four guns a month. We give away three Blue Alpha gift certificates a month for $100 each to our Patreon and Subscribestar supporters. Go there, check it out, patreon.com slash tfbtv, subscribestar.com slash tfbtv. But thanks again to our viewers, subscribers. Take care.